Well, hello, everybody. Um, I always have to pause now because the way Facebook goes live, we're live. Um, I get a, usually a huge echo, but I think I got it prevented. You'll just have to stare at us for a moment before we, we get on. And here we are today. I am super excited about our topic and my guest, um, Palmer Kippola, and super excited to talk about autoimmune disease because I know how many of you out there suffer from autoimmunity. We're going to have Kippola tell her own story and her journey and why she and I both are so passionate about helping people to understand that there is healing from autoimmunity. Um, so often our conventional medical system doesn't give a lot of hope. It's here's your diagnosis and, and move on and that's it. And there's no hope. And we both have a story around that to tell you today, just to inspire you and give you hope. And I'll actually ask Kippola to tell us a lot about her program and what she um, feels like are the core issues to address. Um, just like you, Kippola, in my clinic, I've seen amazing, I call them miracles, but we all know that it's possible for anybody to reverse these autoimmune diseases when you catch them and look for underlying root cause. So today we're going to jump in. Um, if you haven't seen my other episodes, you can find all of them on YouTube on my channel. You can find them on Stitcher, iTunes. Please um, subscribe or rate for me so that we can stay on with you. Today, my guest, Palmer Kippola, is an author, speaker, and functional medicine certified health coach who helps people reverse and prevent autoimmune conditions. Um, she helped develop a framework called FITES, which we'll uh, talk about today. It stands for food, infections, gut health, hormone balance, toxins, and stress to help others be autoimmune conditions based on her two decade battle in overcoming multiple sclerosis. Her Amazon best-selling book, Beat Autoimmune, The Six Keys to Reverse Your Condition and Reclaim Your Health with Ford by Mark Hyman. Um, she shares secrets and stories, science and strategies to help people heal and thrive. Um, she's done the coursework like I have with IFM. Um, welcome, welcome, Capola. So glad to have you here. Oh, it's such an honor, Dr. Jill. I love being here. I love the work that you're doing. And yes, I am the woman with two last names. So first name is Palmer. I knew um, I just said that. So, like, oh. <laughs> you know, just wanted to get that out of the way. You can call me anything you like because I'll respond to most things. So, you know, that's just it. It's so funny because I got Dr. Kippola this morning from a client. I'm like, no, 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 it's not Dr. Kippola. It's just Palmer. And I get Dr. Palmer. So straight up Palmer. Um, such a pleasure to be And I am here. the worst with names too. For some reason, I get these like little things. That I call them like worms in your head where they just like it's stuck. And then there's one person I always call them the wrong name. Or for some reason, that is not my gift. So thank you for your grace. It's just <laughs> perfect. Putting it out. Yeah. So, yeah. So Palmer, let's start with your story. I love stories and you've got a good one. Um, tell us about your diagnosis and then what happened with you with the MS. Yeah, well, I uh, will do so. I have to take you back a little bit in time because I was 19 years old. Um, I had just finished my freshman year. I was home from college and just working a summer job, pretty happy, healthy, well-adjusted young woman. And one morning out of the blue, I woke up and the soles of my feet were all tingling. Like that feeling you get when you've slept on a limb too long and it's all tingly because the blood's flowing back, but this time the blood didn't flow back. And I thought, oh, this will just go away. So I went off to work, but it didn't go away. And instead that tingling crept up my leg like a vine. Mm. And by the time it got to my knees, I knew I was in trouble. So I called my parents who called the family doctor who said, get her to the neurologist today at UCLA. So that's what we did. And within five minutes of just having me do this really cursory exam, the doctor pronounced, I'm 99% certain you have MS, multiple sclerosis. And if I'm right, there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. We were absolutely terrified because we had never, this is the eighties just to yes. level set people. Okay. No internet hadn't heard of MS before. Um, nobody knew. I mean, this was just such a mystery. We left her office with very little information, very little hope. And off we went home. And that night, my mom crawled in bed with me and she's holding me. And by this time, we're both crying and I'm crying harder because by this point, Dr. Jill, I had gone numb from the neck down. So my body had been tingling all the way up to my collarbones, but all the tingling areas just went fully numb and it would stay that way for a full six weeks. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's so scary, especially at 19. Right now we look back and we're like, maybe we could handle it better now, but at 19, you think you're immortal kind of in those ages, right? You don't think about illness at all. So that'd be so scary. And then to be told there's no hope, right? And not know what you're unbelievable. So where did you go from there? 
So I lay on the couch and there was nothing to do except wait it out. So I watched the um, 1984 Summer Olympics on the couch and dear friends would come by and bring me cookies or whatever friends bring books, movies yeah. to watch with me. And this one family friend came and she was into things that were metaphysical. And she asked me a question, which I didn't realize for many years was actually a gift. And she said, Palmer, why do you think you got the MS? what do you mean? Why do I think I, wait, are you suggesting that I might've done something to get this? Like I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And of course she left and didn't mean anything harmful by it, but I didn't have anywhere to go. So I chewed on that question, like a dog with a bone. And it came to me in this flash of insight, but I have to take you back a tiny bit more in time because I had been adopted as a baby by very loving mom and dad. But my dad had been a fighter pilot and his way was the right way. And we did the head butting quite a bit. Yeah. And Dr. Jill, in that moment, as I'm lying on the couch, I had this picture of my earliest memory, I think, which is me, age three or four. My dad is yelling at my mom, calling her names. She shut herself in their bedroom and she's crying. And I've got my little dukes up looking at my dad, you call my mom names and I'll sock your lights out or, you know, whatever a three-year-old is going to yell, who knows? I had become a child warrior. And in that moment, I realized, oh my God, I'm primed for a fight. I mean, I'm literally on hypervigilant, developed insomnia at age 12, like yeah. scanning the environment for safety, Mm -hmm. And in that, I had no background in immunity or anything like this, but I viewed the immune system as Pac-Man, you know, the video game yes. that they're going to go eat the bad guy. But I viewed in that moment that my own immune system didn't have a real fight. So it was going to make one up yeah. and attack me. So I had to do all kinds of visualizations to help calm that down. So my initial hypothesis to answer our friend's question, why did you get the MS? I believed it was chronic stress yes. and trauma, yeah. which I do know still rings true for me today, even though I know there's much more to the story. So that was my first big aha moment. Wow. I'm sitting here just like amazed at the similarities. Many of my you know followers know my story and I won't spend a lot of time here, but very briefly, cancer at 25, Crohn's six months after I finished all of my treatment, you know, was in remission for cancer and then got Crohn's. Crohn's is also an autoimmune disease like MS where the body attacks instead of the nerve cells, the myelin sheaths attacks the gut. Now it's interesting because I realized I healed from those things. That's a whole nother story we won't get into like you. Um, and I was told it's incurable. So like you, my physician said, Jill, this is incurable. You'll have it forever, lifelong. There's no cure. You're going to need drugs. So, so relate to your story, but even more than that, 10 years later, I got mold related illness, got very ill from mold. And I remember walking along the road one day and having this massive aha. I wish I would have had it at your age. And what it was that all my years, the fighting um, analogy was what I lived. And I grew up in a barn family, pull it by the bootstraps. You're strong. You, we, you don't show weakness. And I was yes. an empath sensitive soul that tried to be like my siblings and like my family. And what, what I realized that I took on that fighter, that no weakness, that kind of same exact thing. And I have no doubt that some people's autoimmune disease is related to these mental stories and trauma and those yes. things. But I walked along that road and I realized my mold related illness was my body trying to get rid of mold, but in the process, damaging tissues and fighting too hard. Right. And it was such an aha that I have to change my story from the fighter. Wow. And it's funny, you have the Pac-Man, mine were minions, the little yellow wow. guys. And I literally was like, I've got to change and meditate and, and actually yeah. have a visualization around my immune system yeah. being different from fighting because it's going to kill me if I don't. So I love that you say that because we both kind of discovered in our own way, like this metaphor that we were living um, was actually playing itself out in our immune systems. Unbelievable. And yet so common too, right? Yeah. Wow. So from there, and then I, what I love is the thing we're going to talk about your um, acronym for this is literally <laughs> back to your story. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. So tell yes. us how you start, like, when did you find out there was something you could do? How did you really revert? Oh, all right. So let's condense things. Um, so over the next two decades, mm -hmm. all I had was the public library for a while and my own intuition 
because the only book was the swank diet that said that a low fat, high vegetarian diet or high grain, low right. fat was the best diet for MS. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, but apart from that, it took two decades of experimentation. And I started with stress reduction. So started doing yoga in the late 80s, started meditating in the mid 90s. And I noticed that when I actually did those practices, the symptoms would subside. Wow. And yet when I was stressed, like exams back at school, I, I was well enough to go back to school for the rest of my sophomore year. But again, my dad had told me, don't let anybody know that you have MS. They'll wow. think you're weak. Oh, see, same story, so, right? <laughs> same story, like fighter pilot, you know, you don't wow. show weakness, yeah. don't cry, pull yourself up. Mm -hmm. um, but the stress of hiding that, I just want to say to people, this is, there is no shame. Yeah. Like this is an opportunity to love yourself, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that at the time. So two decades of attempted stress reduction, noticing that when I had exams or stress or conflict in the, or more work, you know, I was in corporate America for yes. a couple of decades. Um, I would notice the advent of symptoms like really bad or new symptoms. And yet when I was calmer, things subsided. Wow. So stress reduction was a foundation of me getting better and frankly, healing from trauma. Yeah. You know, the forgiveness, yeah. forgiving my dad, forgiving myself was even more foundational and all the spiritual work. This is so important. Most people start with diet and then get to the trauma. I just happened to go into it the other way, right? Wow. It wasn't until 2010 that I discovered functional medicine. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I've had this little pesky tummy gurgling after eating. I think, you know, maybe this has something to do with EMS. I don't know, but it wouldn't hurt to see a nutritionist, right? So I found one, happened to be a functional medicine nutritionist. She led me through an elimination diet. Mm -hmm. I removed the gluten, the dairy, all the things, yeah. all those inflammatory foods within one week of stopping this. And really I've done further experimentation, but I can isolate it down to mostly the gluten. Within one week of removing gluten, I stopped having all tummy trouble which I had had forever. I just thought it was normal. I totally normalized it. And within one month of removing these foods, stopped having MS symptoms ever again, full stop. Wow. Like never again. But I'm really, really super quick to add, as you know, yeah. this is not normally the path, right? It's often way more complicated than this. And my toxin bucket included, you know, a heavy load of stress and trauma, I had a sugar addiction, which led to the candida overgrowth and the mercury fillings. So this is, this is the path is to keep that toxin bucket as free and clear as possible. And so that's the opportunity really. But that was, that was the beginning of people said to me, you know, this is, this is a big deal. And I was like, well, this isn't a big deal. I'm nobody special. I'm like, no, this, this seems like a big deal. So we can talk about, um, you know, what happened next, because I quit my job to, I had this cognitive dissonance, yes. Dr. Jill, six neurologists had told me there was nothing I could do except take medication or prepare for life in a wheelchair. And this last neurologist at Stanford said, if I didn't take this medication, I should prepare for a shortened life. Wow. Scared the bejesus, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it took a lot of guts. I, I did try a little bit for a little while, did not work for me. Um, but then I decided once I fully healed, I needed to study this because it just didn't make any sense that six really smart doctors told me there's nothing you can do. And yet I had a completely different experience. And that's, that was the beginning of figuring things out. Absolutely amazing. And I just, I can hear in your story, you, you obviously had this deeper purpose, right? And you had to like, at that point of transition, like realize, okay, am I going to walk into this way that that my health and stuff has called me into this, like, cause now clearly you're teaching and helping people um, in this way of what you've been through. And you're probably living much more aligned with your purpose, but isn't it <laughs> funny how the universe call like allows us to go like at the time I hated the cancer. I hated the Crohn's. I went bald. I was so sick. It was miserable. Mm -hmm. I would never wish that on anyone, but like you, I can say it was one of the best things that ever happened. The knowledge and information and even the passion we bring to what we do with our patients and uh, clients, isn't it 
um, I'm sure now you can look back and, and see the blessing, but it's hard in the suffering. I, I want to say that not to diminish, like if you're out there listening and you're suffering with autoimmunity or MS, it is miserable. It is so hard. And my heart goes out to you with every um, bit, but it's also, there's pieces in that, that we can learn and that do somehow transform us if we allow it to. And it's yeah. still hard. <laughs> it is still hard. And yet it is such a gift. If mm -hmm. you can just imagine just to hypothesize that just maybe mm -hmm. this is happening for me because as you say so eloquently these symptoms are simply messages from your body letting you know that things are out of balance mm -hmm. and so your approach my approach we have to look under the hood we have to go to the root causes because once we address things down there it's like that's when the leaves change right that's when the tree health changes Absolutely. The roots. So you found functional medicine. You decided to become a coach and obviously now you're helping people. Tell us about this acronym. Cause I love that it ties up <laughs> to kind of like the, it's so beautiful that you've taken something that could have been traumatic and made it into a beautiful foundation of your program. But tell, tell us more about what that means and um, the fight acronym. I will. So my dad, who I have to give him massive credit as one of my greatest teachers and motivators. Mm -hmm. So even though and this is also important, right? You could view him as the bad guy, but was he really? He was also my most motivational teacher. And he used to say to me, honey, you can beat this thing. You can beat the MS. Wow. You can beat this. Mm -hmm. And so he believed in me. I yeah. didn't know how the heck to do that, but that was the path I was on. So once I dove into the research and just spent like six hours a day on PubMed, mm -hmm. looking at all of these biomedical studies, because I wanted to figure out what are all these mysterious root cause categories that we can possibly control. Mm -hmm. And I, I put all the words together on a page and because I'm a word person, I did like a jumble, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to get a word that people would remember. And the word that emerged was fights Wow. because that encapsulated those six big root causes, which are food, wow. infections, gut health, hormone balance, toxins, and stress, which includes trauma and poor sleep and exercise. Yeah. I couldn't cram it all in. And I lament that it didn't spell peace because yeah. the rest of my life is trying to be a peaceful warrior instead of a fighting warrior. But that seemed to be metaphorically kind of perfect. And when you address those root causes, that's when you can unravel the symptoms and then the diagnosis. That's the, Amazing. that's the opportunity. And I really like that acronym because it brings it all together. And it does the thing you and I know too, is you had MS, which is such a serious debilitating autoimmune disease. I don't know if there's one that's more scary, um, especially because it happens a lot to young people, the diagnosis, and there's a lot of difficult autoimmune diseases out there. But the bigger picture is regardless of autoimmune disease, we know the root causes are the same. So you yes. and I both, I always say I could have someone who comes in with a rare autoimmune disease that I've never heard of. And I still am confident that I can help that patient yes. because the roots are the same, right? Yes. Let's talk a little about the gut. That's one of my favorites. I'm sure one of the core, um, but gut wise, you obviously took out gluten and I'm sure over the years healed any dysbiosis. How does oh, yeah. the gut and immune system connect? Oh my goodness. This is such a big and huge and important question. And it's really hard for people to fathom that what is going on if you have joint pain or brain fog or numbness or tingling anywhere in your body that it has anything to do with the gut. And so I will say that I was actually fortunate that I had mild gut symptoms because that took me down the path, right? If I hadn't had gut yeah. symptoms, would I have gone to a nutritionist? And, and this is so important. And I actually learned this from David Perlmutter who wrote Grain Brain that the core hub grand central station for inflammation in the body is your gut, right? This is where all disease as Hippocrates said, um, stems from the gut and, and health conversely. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the elements is that we now have this autoimmune equation that is I felt like it should have made front page news. It didn't even make back page news, right? right. Dr. Alessio Fasano, yes. now at Harvard Medical School, um, professor and um, head of gastroenterology for pediatrics, led a research team because scientists have always known that you need the genes and environmental factors to contribute to the development of autoimmunity, but nobody could really put together how in the world those two worlds collided to unleash autoimmunity. 
Right. And Dr. Fasano and his team in the early 2000s, I think, discovered the third element in the equation that's necessary for autoimmunity to develop, and that is a leaky gut, mm -hmm. intestinal hyperpermeability, right? Which sounds crazy and made up. And now, thankfully, this is becoming acknowledged yeah. in the medical <laughs> community as a real thing. Well, well, cancer drug manufacturers know that yes. leaky gut is real because they actually engineer their chemotherapy drugs to create a leaky gut so the medication can get in faster. Yeah. So whether or not people admit this is real, they've known for a very long time in any event. So what's so exciting about having an equation like this is that if you flip the equation, you could potentially, as Dr. Fasano wrote in his abstract, arrest and reverse mm -hmm. the autoimmunity. And that's what I had done and didn't even know it. Right. right. That's how you happy. I mean, that you've really happened upon the right keys too. And I love that you started by how you flipped, like you really did the stress and lifestyle piece first. And you're right. A lot of patients will do that later, but what a great foundation. Cause you were in a great space for the yeah. physical body to That's just right. those things. like the, I, I suspect if you hadn't maybe done that order, who knows, but the gluten-free diet might've taken longer than a few weeks to make you feel so much better. Cause you already have the foundation. You so. know, you're so wise. And I'm so glad you said that because that's, I'm not sure I would have had that same response. Yeah. And I think it's really important that people understand because I have some people respond, well, you know, it was so easy for you, yeah. right? As there is a lot that goes into it. For I, sure. I still relate Palmer because same thing with me for Crohn's within two weeks of changing my diet, gluten-free, I was completely symptom-free, fever-free <sighs> with Crohn's. Now, just like you, it took me a couple of years to fix the whole dysbiosis of the gut, yeah. but I knew within literally over a little over a week that I was like, okay, this is something big because my symptoms are gone. So, so wow. similar to, uh, to you as far as, and you mentioned, I just want to spot on the chemotherapy and cancer drugs. Um, I had the cancer with three drug chemotherapy and within six months had developed the autoimmunity of Crohn's. And I have no doubt that those drugs were part of the creation yeah. of that, that led to the Crohn's too. So, right. Very, very right. Good. But it's so empowering to know that now that we have an equation and we have epigenetics, yeah right? Which tells us that the environment matters most. Now that we have epigenetics, which puts, puts us squarely in control yeah. of our health outcomes and this autoimmune equation, now the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to get in and, and address each one of those categories. Yeah. So infections and toxins, those are huge categories. I always feel like function medicine boils down in the complex chronic to these two, creating hormone imbalance, immune and all that. But yeah. talk to us briefly about infections and toxins. These are huge buckets. Yeah. Just overview of, of what patients might have to think about when they're dealing with those categories. So I am fortunate to collaborate with naturopaths, who one of whom specializes in resolving infections, oh, especially in the gut. So it is you know, I'm not playing doctor. She is so good at what she does, but here's the thing. More than 95% of our patients, our clients are dealing with candida overgrowth. Um, this is a big deal. We're supposed to have some yeast, but it gets, it becomes really imbalanced and parasites are a way bigger thing than you may imagine. Um, so that's another conundrum that we see literally all the time. Um, the part that I think people don't often understand or appreciate is how medications can harm the gut and how stress can create a leaky gut as well. Yes. So when people ask me, you know, what can I take to heal my gut? I usually say my top three suggestions are remove, remove, remove. Yes. yes. It's what are you doing that's harming your gut that we need to stop because until the bombardment of our precious microbiome and the lining of our gut until that is stopped, we are going to have that autoimmune attack be perpetuated. So that is, those are some of my observations, but you are the gut queen. <laughs> so I, I will add, well, uh, I I'd love to hear agree thoughts. with what you said. You've said it brilliantly because it really is. And I love, again, these points are so right on um, because removal, you can do like all the glutamine in the world or some wonderful probiotic, but if you have dysbiosis, meaning abnormal yeah. 
microbiome, bacteria, or fungal, um, you must take care of that first before you can start to add in the good guys or even, even really heal the lining. Um, and I also like that you mentioned candida and fungus because that's so prominent and it's hard to diagnose. You have to have a high index of suspicion and many, many patients do have this as an issue. Yeah. Huge. yeah. Th those are, those are huge. Um, we, oh, where do you go from here? So another huge conundrum that I think is often overlooked mm -hmm. are oral infections. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we see a lot of people that have had wisdom teeth removed, root canals, and in those pockets, these cavitations develop. Yeah. So I quite frequently, I mean, this is just part of the standard standard thing, go see a holistic dentist for a cone beam x-ray. Let's take a look and see what's going on. I happen to have four cavitations in all my wisdom teeth area. And, and so, yeah, you beat something like I beat the MS, right? I haven't had a single symptom in 12 years, but life happens. Yes. You know, I'm a human being right. and I don't know, six, seven years ago, I had like eight colds in a row. I just would catch one, another, 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 went to a naturopath who said, did you have your wisdom teeth removed? I'm like, what do my wisdom teeth have to do with having colds? Yeah. Right. Went and had a cone beam x-ray. Sure enough, found the cavitations. And um, there are infections that love those anaerobic infections that don't get oxygen. They thrive in that environment. So what happens? Your immune system is just on overdrive. It's overburdened. I stopped having colds Wow! within a month of that surgery. Yeah. Like seriously, I've had one cold in seven years. I have found that to be as well, a very, very, and it's hidden in a way that unless we're asking the questions, which I usually do, but it's often the kind of hidden thing that patients aren't thinking about. And unless, and most general dentists aren't going to offer a cone CT, more and more biological are, but it is a specialized, it's basically an image that will look for these cavitations or their loosened spots on the x-ray or the CT yeah. screen that show that there could be, and they could be um, either underneath an old root canal, if you have a weak immune system or in those um, places where you've had teeth pulled, like it's, and it's way more common because you don't often have symptoms. Like in those places where the root canal, where the uh, wisdom teeth were, there's no pain or or, or nerve fibers None. So know that it's in that jaw. No, you wouldn't have any idea. I, I, I do have a client who came to me with diabetes, stage three kidney disease, mm -hmm. um, and cardiovascular disease was seen by a cardiologist. She had blood pressure that was just stratospheric on blood pressure meds. She had this inflammatory weight gain where she would gain and lose like 50 pounds in a week, like really unusual, crazy blood sugar, unmanaged up to 400s. I mean, just really, really in bad shape. We did all the things. We did the food changes, the gut healing infections and so forth. And it, she was still having some symptoms. So suggested that she go to a holistic dentist. She did. She had three root wow. canals dealt with. Mm -hmm. Her numbers all came down. Yeah. I've all seen. came down, went back to her cardiologist who said, I don't know what you're doing. Keep doing it. You don't need to come back. Mm, this is serious. Like we just, sometimes it's hard to put it all together, mm -hmm. which is why you need to do this detective work. Um, but it can be so powerful and so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. And often, I mean, we do need to go through all of these things you mentioned, but there's, I found there's often one or two that are much bigger for someone. So it doesn't mean that everybody has horrendous dysbiosis or everybody has, there's different things. So you say hormones kind of at the end, I would agree that's a layer that comes later because often when you fix the toxin and infection, the hormones yeah. balance themselves. Yes. It's a little bit about that. And why is that important? Yeah. Well, I mean, so much of your questions and everything else there, everything's connected. So I just, I just want to say that everything is, is connected. And as we address each of these layers, things just come back into balance, like the weebles that wobble and they just come right back up. Um, but we see kind of four hormonal imbalances that are low. Mm -hmm. We see low vitamin D, which is the easiest hormonal imbalance to correct. Mm -hmm. We see low DHEA, which is the foundation hormone across mm -hmm. the board, pretty low. We see low melatonin, which is not just for sleep, but really helps with immune modulation. And what is the last low one we see? Um, let me go to the high ones and I'll come back to, oh, and low thyroid, hypothyroid. Oh, yeah. 
So those are the four big low hormonal imbalances. And then on the high side, we see high insulin, mm -hmm. high estrogen, and high cortisol. Yeah. So it's just, this is the typical constellation of hormone imbalances mm -hmm. that we see with people, but almost to a person, we see these coming back into balance as they are, start to address other things, the insulin and the cortisol being among the most important. Oh, could not agree more. And really our epidemic obesity, diabetes, even women, um, endometriosis or PCOS or all of these things are kind of in that bucket, high insulin, high estrogen, high cortisol. Yeah. So, um, interesting, just a little side note. I learned myself as I've been high cortisol my whole, most of my life, um, until recently, but, um, I would exercise like pretty intensely and it yeah. took me a lot of years. You would think that as a doctor, I was trained, but what I was realizing for many years, I was pushing that cortisol even higher with my intense yeah. exercise. And I really switched my regimen to much more walking, hiking, a little bit of weight mm. training, but I don't do the high intensity anymore at all. And it shifted everything for me. And that was because I was even making that cortisol worse. It was already high and I was making it higher. So exercise has a lot. It's not just one size fits all. And not everybody should be doing high intensity. If your cortisol is already high, you may need to not, again, not that that's bad, you need to individualize it, but there's a big right. difference in people. Right. Um, so if you are listening and some of them either themselves have experienced autoimmunity, maybe they have a new diagnosis or someone they love, that's often how we get into this is someone we care about gets sick and we want to help them. Um, what kinds of words of wisdom or hope would you want to leave them with if they're right in the middle of, you know, they've either just been diagnosed or they're still suffering from a disease that's autoimmune related? Mm. This is just such a passion of mine is to transmit the certainty to people that you can heal. Hope is real. So many people have healed, which is why I didn't just write the book about my story. Somebody very wise said to me, tell other people's stories, share other people's, because this is ripples of health. I shared your story in my book, which is so powerful. And Terry Walls and Mark Hyman and Susan Blum and all of these fantastic practitioners who had been conventional docs, right? They didn't find functional medicine until they themselves needed it. Mm -hmm. They needed it. Yes. So there is so much hope and so much evidence of so many people who have already beat these autoimmune conditions. I'm not some spontaneous remission. And this is what I hope to convey that we have the science that shows us how, why it's possible to beat autoimmune right? We've got the epigenetics. We've got an autoimmune equation. We now have science that shows that our genetics are responsible for up to 10% of our health outcomes. Wow. And latest, later cancer research shows that maybe only 5% is due to genetics. 95% is due to your yes. lifestyle. Yes. Right. So we've got the science and now with people like you doing this work each and every day, and through books like mine and, you know, the practice that I have, people are healing. Yes. And this is how we spread ripples of health to show that this is possible. You can do it. Love it. And thank you for sharing the work, not only in your book, but just in your eloquence and understanding. Cause I think it also takes, you have an understanding, you have an experience, you have a, a clientele and you obviously work with a naturopath and every, this team that's working with people with disease. But what I love is you have an ability um, to really explain it well. And mm. I think that's a gift. And I'm so glad that you do. I'm so glad that you share it. So I'm so glad to have you here because it really is important because you can understand it or even experience it, but not be able to share it with other people. And you obviously have that calling and gift. So thank you for using oh. it so well. And I will be sure and do my best to get the word out. Um, where can people get your book? Where can they find you and more about you in the program? So Beat Autoimmune, the book is available on Amazon in five languages and in different Amazons around the world. So that's where to go for the book. I think it may still be on sale. Um, people can find me at my website, which is palmerkippola.com. And I am coming out with a self-paced course called Beat Autoimmune Academy. So that's the website, beatautoimmuneacademy.com. I just want to empower people that you can do this. Yeah. You can get all the information that you need, do the work and, um, you know, really live into the purpose that you're talking about. Because I think when you have a purpose and a vision for your future and you use that as your motivation to pull you forward, there's nothing you can't do. So no matter what, never, ever, ever give up. 
Oh, love it. Love it. Love it, Palmer. What great words. Thank you so much for your time today. I just love, I wanted to share one little thing. I recently read a new book called by uh, Jeffrey Reidinger called Curity. And he just, he actually is a Harvard psychiatrist that goes through mm. the evidence for spontaneous healing. So it's very relevant. He has some autoimmune diseases, but one of the commonalities, no surprise, but the thing you just left your, our listeners with, and that's purpose and meaning. He mm. found there was diet lifestyle. There's all these things these patients did, and they were all varied and not everybody changed their diet, but the one thing they almost 100% had in common was a sense of purpose and meaning. So let's leave our listeners with that. And oh. thank you so, so much for joining me today. Such an honor. Love this. I'm on your team. Take great care. Thank you. Thank you.